Hi class, in this lecture I'm going to be going over the yellow wallpaper and trifolds. So let's go ahead and switch to canvas. Okay, so the yellow wallpaper was written by Charlotte Perkins Gilman in 1892, so I know we're stepping way, way back in time. Um, but we are talking about feminist literature now, and so when we talk about feminist literature you have to start um, in the late 1890s because that's really when um, the first wave of feminism was happening. This is when women were trying to get, you know, rights to vote, what rights for uh, equal power. And remember in these days, most women couldn't go to college. They weren't allowed to even own their own money or have a bank account. Um, all of the property was owned by their husband. And in a sense, women were owned by their husbands. Um, so again, like those things we have to remember when we're reading the story, which a lot of students think is crazy. And it is because it's depicting what life was like um, for women. So basically we have a main character. Um, it's kind of a, a, a wealthy family. As we know, the husband is a doctor um, and she's got a sister-in-law and a brother and uh, a brother-in-law and um, they, you know, they all kind of try to tell her what's best for her. Um, she just had a child and she is dealing with postpartum depression, which was not well documented or known. I mean, honestly, only until recently. So a lot of women mothers were suffering from postpartum depression and were basically sent to asylums or drugged up. Um, a lot of the things that they would do, they would give them lobotomies or they would take their ovaries out. Um, this is true. You can look this stuff up. Um, it's pretty horrific. And so what happens is this uh, husband, who is this doctor, and again, doctor knows best, right? And most doctors at this time were male. So again, males had most of the say and most of the expertise and could tell women what to get, what to do and what was best. Um, and he basically, you know, tells his, his wife she can't write. She's a writer. She's not allowed to write. She's not allowed to read novels. Novels, by the way, were forbidden to, for women to read. They were considered, you know, filth. <laughs> Um, and so anyway, he puts her in this room, really locks her in there with a nailed down bed and she's completely isolated and it almost seems like she's in an insane asylum, even though she's in an estate. Um, but it really kind of deals with the domestic life, right? And she's really um, infantilized. So she's turned into a child. Like she's not looked at like a fellow, uh, like a partner for him. It's really like almost like he looks at her like a child. Um, there's a ton of symbolism for just the wallpaper itself being personified as well as the colors that are in the story. Um, also, I just wanted to bring a few things in here. I'm gonna, um, so, you know, women had their domestic duties, especially when it came to the aristocracy or the people of higher wealth. Um, and you really, um, you know, the husband and the father were the ones that made the money and women were really kind of like slaves in a, in a sense. They were slaves to their husbands and their fathers. They had to kind of do whatever they were told. Um, and so, Anyway, it wasn't until the 1920s that uh, white women were allowed to vote, and then the 1960s, uh, women of color were allowed to vote. So these are some dates to keep in mind when we're talking about um, feminism. Um, and then obviously, like this idea of the patriarchy and male dominance and colonization, you know, all these things are connected. Um, and you've really got like male dominated uh, fields of science and religion. And so women were pretty much left out of these conversations. And again, just the word hysterical. Um, is a pretty loaded word and it goes back to these times in which women were considered too emotional or too irrational to be like a man and make decisions and that's why men kind of ran things. Um, okay, so now we've got um, the other story which is Trifles and this is a play actually. Um, and it kind of harkens back to uh, Kate Chopin's uh, The Awakening. This is kind of an epitome text of uh, feminism. It was written in 1899, um, which is funny if you notice the wallpaper was written even before that. Um, but if you really are interested in feminist literature, this is considered like the tome of it. Um, but anyway, so in uh, the Glass Bells piece, you know, we've got um, a scene in which these uh, police officers are investigating uh, the death of um, the main character, Minnie, her husband, right? So he, his name is Wright, Mr. Wright. And um, she, it's uh, suggested that she has murdered him, right? And there's a bunch of different um, kind of references to it. The, the house is in disarray, right? Um, these, these little trifles, as the men call them, um, these little everyday things that these women work around in the domestic space 
are considered, you know, trifles. They're they're nothing. They're little little things that don't matter, right? But they're everything to these women. Um, and so the women actually piece together um, and and unveil the truth about this crime. And what they find out is that Minnie was really kind of abused by her husband. Like he, she used to sing, she used to dance, she had, was very bright, vibrant, had friends, and then he kind of just took the life out of her. And what's funny is the big symbol is the you know the canary inside the cage, which again is a symbol for the woman in the domestic space um so you'll see this kind of trope in almost all of feminist literature there's always some kind of caged bird um, and that really is representation of the caged housewife right and so we learn out we learn that the husband has killed the bird um and so that may be why um, Mrs. Wright, Minnie Foster, um, ended up killing him. Um, and the women, of course, understand, and they, they actually don't tell the, their husbands, the uh, police officers, they do not let them know what they found out because they're trying to protect her. And in a way, it's like women coming together and um, really that solidarity of feminism, women together kind of like protecting one another. Um, but yeah, so, um, so I hope you enjoyed the stories. Um, the two other ones that we're going to be reading also kind of deal with feminism as well. And we'll talk about those in the next video. Okay, thanks.